Hey, this is Blake Sloan. I've been selling real estate over 14 years and our team of highly trained professionals along with our unmatched marketing has sold thousands of homes here in the Myrtle Beach area and this is how we do it. So what I'm gonna teach you on today is what do you do when the shit happens to you? And for me, the Kobe thing is a great example of me myself because I was literally on the same helicopter right and so that's something that dude I could still be dwelling on today wanting to know what's going on what really happened did the fog get him was it mechanical issues right was it could I, that motor gone out when I was in that thing right what was going on there and so then here's the deal next time I get on an airplane what's gonna happen right the same if I don't process my thing I can pretend oh it was okay right false lift I was on the helicopter I'm meant to be God has me to do better things which is good right but next time I get on a, an airplane, or hopefully I don't want to get on a helicopter if I do, <laughs> right? The reality is, <laughs> that's a, you know what I'm saying? But ultimately, that's the one thing that matters, right? And so that I was, and here's the thing. Uh, one small thing happened to me on that private plane that kind of worried me a little bit. I got on a commercial flight, whatever, a couple weeks ago, and I was kind of still sketched out, yeah. right? And so why? Because I hadn't processed my feelings about it yet. Yeah. And that's the key. Now, this is to myself. So we all go through this, but what happens is, in, in real estate, this is where you're going to get the most value in your deals. What do you do when you go sideways? What do you do when they want to cancel the deal? What do you do, Baron, when the agent wants to pull back the offer that you guys verbally agreed to? Right? That's what the difference is. And so most people can't process that feeling fast enough. But the faster you can process feelings, the faster you find success. And that's what I'm going to get to you too, is most people never deal with it, so they didn't end up dwelling on all this stuff. And then it goes south anyways. Yeah, like well, the deal blows anyways just because you didn't make the call to try to save the deal. Right. Or you didn't call the lender to say, check another product. We can do, you know. Because we, we go to this pit called right? Yeah. We go to this pit. We're like, all right, whatever. This just kind of is what it is, right? And I become controlled by the outside versus me controlling the outside there. Right, Barrett, what you got? So, a prime example. Uh, I've been through this. A lot of us have been through this. But it's processing your mindset and, and your thinking. So, for instance... While I was in here, I've been in relationships, it's gone south, and you cheated on, so on and so forth. Like Sandy, she was in a 20-year relationship, her husband cheated on her. I was in a relationship, they cheated on me. I was at a point in time in my life, I was like, fuck it, I'm never getting another relationship again because all women are bad. Right. Well, see, so Sandy came into the relationship with the same mentality. So we both had to overcome that and believe in each other. And through that process, we were able to change our mindset. Mm -hmm. Right. But if, you, if we had not up, and... and prepared ourselves for that, we would have never even gotten a relationship. Right. right. And part of that just ultimately doing what? With dealing with that story, right? Dealing with that trigger, dealing with that, that reality of that trigger, sorry. And here's what I'm gonna get to. And so everybody, and some takes longer. That's and what, what, I, I what I want you guys to get at is be like super ninja. I can, I can process something in 10 minutes, right? Where the masses, they let that take real estate in their mind for two weeks, three weeks. Watch people around you, still worried about this just happened, right? Still worried about it. The DJ this morning was talking about it. Right? About, I still had him messed up on the, on the thing on the way back from the gym. And so ultimately, what happens is these triggers, right? They literally trigger feelings. So as this happens, you're going to get triggered, angry, mad, sad, right? So when you're dealing sideways, Baron, how'd you feel the other day? What, what were your feelings you had? Thursday, when you're dealing sideways. Right? Piss, angry, what happened? Did it help you? I could see in the, in the meeting on Thursday, whatever day it was that, that happened, that there were some things that obviously, you know. Yeah, I mean, were, Right, but it causes, but it causes weight, right? Because I know you taught Alex about the deal itself, yeah, right? The Alex, was he happy about it? No. Right, and so ultimately, what happens is there's a combination of things here. So there's a fact, and this is what we kind of do every morning on certain things. There's a fact that we perceive as the fact. The problem with most people is they twist the reality and make the facts match what they want. And so what you ultimately have is a combination of these three here together, and guess what? This generates a story. And so for most people, the problem with that is they tend to create that story and look at that story as fact. Because they have feelings, it has to be real. Like if you feel a certain way about something, it has to be real. 100%, you know? and right? That's your story. And that's why when we go through the, 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 the stack every morning, ask me, you know, without emotions, what's the facts? And I catch myself sometimes, well, you know, so-and-so is right? Well, yeah. in reality, I they know, right? The fact is, they did this or did that, right? The agent that screws you over, right? You're like, oh, they're, they're uh, whatever you want to think of a word, like they're uh, sure. a, a shady agent, right? <laughs> oh, the fact is, the fact is, right? Like they're shady, whatever, they screwed me over. Well, is that a fact or not? Do we know that? 
And once you learn to, their right, what, yeah, is there, do we know for a fact that's the case? And so you got to be one to question yourself, is that a fact? And so the fastest way to start doing this is to have your stories here and understand, I'm teaching you guys how to understand your mind today, right? Something happens to me, I know it triggers something, right? That's going to automatically trigger what? It's going to trigger a feeling. And so from that feeling that I have, my mind automatically drives, right? From what it thinks is the fact, it drives a story. And most of the time, what the masses do is like, oh, so-and-so is just an asshole. So-and-so's shady, right? They're this. But ultimately, my client tried to screw me over. Well, did they? Or did you not communicate what's going on clearly, right? So unless you're able to go through and actually have this story here, we got to do the first thing first. What do you think it is? Right? We got to question the story. Right? Is it true? And this is why I'm processing these things, right? And whatever I'm going through. And so the question in that regard helps me understand what's going on here. One, let me question the facts. Do what I believe is the facts or the actual facts? And this is hard to do. It takes discipline. Why? Because we tend to bullshit ourselves so much and think that they're a certain way that we're not able to do so. And you want to watch people who ping pong about life? Guess what they are? They're the ones who believe everything that they feel is the fact. Those are the hardest people to deal with, and they have the most chaos happen to them. Why? Because they never own any of it. They're not able to look at the mirror and look at the facts, right? And so we have to question that story. Here's the thing. Is that true? And when I say true, there's a word you want to add this. Is it 100% true? Because what we tend to do as humans is what? We blur lines, right? Yeah. So we're like, all right, well, you know, 8 out of 10 times is probably true. There's an 80% chance they're screwing me over right now, right? <laughs> Whatever it is. And so that's one thing in my mind, dude. I started going through this thing. Where does, you know, look at helicopter crashes. Okay, what are the statistics that I'd be in the same uh, airport that somebody crashed in? There's a lot of damn airports out there, right? Especially to have somebody famous like that crash in a helicopter. I'm like, ah, what are the chances it's the same exact helicopter? And think about how many thousands or hundreds of thousands of helicopters are out there, right? A lot. What are the chances it's the same exact pilot in the same exact helicopter in the same exact airport? You start looking at these things, right? And your mind starts going, and all of a sudden you believe it's a, it's a fact, right? And so in my mind, I should have been on, well, I obviously could have been on that helicopter in that regard, right? And so what happens, we have to understand that my story here, is it true? Yes or no, we got to look at one thing, right? The one thing I look at here is this story, here's the most important part, regardless of this story, if it's yes or no, does it get me what I want? Does this story get me what I want? Because here's the deal. If it's true, and it doesn't get me what I want, guess what? We're both screwed. There's going to be two things. There's, I'm going to give you guys, this is the biggest aha for me and where this process is, and Barrett kind of nailed that preemptively, which yeah. is good. So check it out. This story here, is it what I want? Most times, no, regardless, yes or no. A lot of times I have something that's true. You kind of learn to manipulate when you process like that. But at the same time, it doesn't mean, so so-and-so could be, you know, at real estate or whatever it is, but does that get me what I want? No, right? It's true, but it doesn't give me what I want, so how do I get what I want? And so I kind of wrote this down, which is super powerful, right? I want to have a, uh, the, the story to give me an eye of power. How do I create a story that gives me an eye of power? What does that mean? You take like, something negative and you turn it into a positive influence. Right. You say. Like, like the story, obviously what's going on with Kobe, yeah. Um, you can fall into the pit or you can take it as, like most of the country right now is live each day and... You know, live in that mama mentality of pushing forward, kind of changing the perspective of the story. You know, the same story. Yep, the but story didn't change. and the difference between the false lift How you here feel about it. and the difference between just switching to the positive, right, is what naturally people tend to do. But I got to make sure I take a full process of what are the true facts, what are the actual feelings, what's the actual story, right, in that regard. And so that way, there's layers. I gotta have a deep enough process here that I can drop it and move on, right? Doesn't mean you're a bad person, but I gotta be able to drop it and move on. Doesn't mean you don't have compassion about the situation, right? I can have compassion, have compassion at that time, you know, when the tears hit the floor in any situation, 
but what I got to do? The faster I pack, pack up, stop that, move forward with my, my, my overall news story that gives me an eye of hope and an eye of power is how I move in to be a more powerful person. Successful people move quickly, period, in everything. They process quickly and they move quickly. That's why you see, right? I wrote uh, from three years ago uh, in my, uh, my Facebook today, it popped up that the number one thing success is just resiliency, right? What do they do? They stop, pick the tears up, right? Process a story, move forward to the next story that gives them two things. I have hope and I have power. What do you think that means? Like, Barrett, what do you think that means overall? Something that gets me to move forward with power and with hope. Because here's the deal, going back to the story, even if it's true, doesn't give me what I want, right? And I'm, even let's say it barely gets me what I want. Is there a better story that can give me more power? And my job is to understand that. You can't just make a story up. You've got to truly believe it, which is the process, right? I can believe, well, this stuff happened for a good reason. People are living Mamba now, but does that truly, do I believe that shit two days from now? No. Right? No. And so me, I had to go through and process this. Out. Here's the deal. As a part of my process, God gave me an opportunity that I needed to do more in this life and make, make it more of a, an impact yeah. on people. And that's why I'm sharing this with you guys today. Part of my process there is sharing how you move these things here around that. Because, dude, from the rest of my life, I have an anchor to, dude, I was on the same helicopter that dude man died on. That could have been me. But if I don't process and move on for that and turn that to, so you can see how, man, that could have been me is my story. And so now God gave me an opportunity that, that I wasn't done in life yet and then I have to make an impact on people. Right? right. And you couple that up along with Kobe Bryant making a, an impact on billions of people at the same time. Now I have something external, but more importantly, I have the internal story that gives me an eye of hope and eye, an eye of power. And so it's got to be the story of me and help me process that and move forward. Right, 100%, right? So the next thing I do, right, is I gotta have, I gotta choose the new story. So I gotta get very clear on what that story is. And so in my head, as you do this more and more, this is something that takes a lot of reps, but I want you guys to be aware of this when you have people that are around you. Because people around you are constantly reaction and living in this world of triggers and pain. We all have relatives that do it, we have friends that do it. I'm sure right now you can think of somebody in your life who lives in this world, right, consistently. I watch some of y'all have things that happen and it goes two days, three days, and that's a difference of capacity. Top producers deal with their shit and move on, right? They'll be willing to go at it with somebody, have a collision, whatever it is, deal with it and move on. Other people who don't process their feelings, they hold the shit for days or days, potentially weeks. Jen, you have some? Yeah, um, process it, I call it, own it. You have to own it. And then the important thing I think that you have to consider is <coughs> what can I control? So you can't control what the other agent does. You can't control what your kid does or what anyone else's feelings are and then move on. So I have a real estate transaction right now where my seller found out that there's a lien against him from eight years ago. Right. It's going to cost him 10 grand. Right. He's going to take 60 away, but he is in pain. I'm not paying it. I leased a car for my wife. I put it in my name because she didn't have credit. We got divorced. She didn't make the payments. It got repoed. I said, listen, there's nothing we can control here. It's done. It's on it. If right. you want to sell this property, you have to pay it. Yep. You got to own it, right? And that's one thing I was saying something else this morning, is that all successful people own 100% of their shit. Not, and this is literally what I wrote this morning. Not 90%, not 95%, not 98%. They have to own 100% of their own shit. You have that 11% of doubt or whatever it is. Well, that's the way they get out, right? Yeah. And they're continue a victim mentality. Mm -hmm. And they're a victim of what happens to them versus them owning what happens to them and making the change, right? And that's one of the biggest things I've ever learned is you cannot ever change the outcome unless you own the current reality, right? You cannot change the outcome unless you own the current reality. And that's something that's very powerful to understand. So as we come through this process here, and it got back to what Alex said, I had this kind of my notes, right? If we don't deal with this here, what happens is it expands and becomes bigger. It expands and becomes bigger. And so what happens, even though we think we process it, we don't because it's still back here in the side of our mind. And the one little thing that comes, it hits us, right? The person in traffic hits us, right? As these things happen, it triggers the hell out of anything and it bothers us and we snap. Usually we snap on people that we love, right? We'll deal with shit all day, shit all day. We don't process the things that we have here at work. Then what happens? We go home to the people that do love us. I was the worst at this. Right? And they say one little thing, what do I do? Snap. Just flamethrow them about like all this <laughs> we got, right? And so, right, the reality is that 
Why? Because we haven't processed and dealt with the reality of what happened here. And so the faster you become in processing, the more success you'll be, the more success you'll be outside of work as well. Most of the stuff that you'll deal with, though, a lot of times it's people around you. And I'll talk about that in a second, but it has to do with what Alex said a minute ago, right? What we end up having, I put this in my notes, it says we become a prisoner of my own vortex in place. And so what happens, all these things here happen, and what happens? It's just a constant vortex of these things happen to us in that regard. And I put, when you're able to process this, this will protect you from the drama and energy and tragedies of life.